have manners and at least oblige. And after that, I married him two years afterwards. So that's what happens. No. <laughs> And then you had two kids. Mm -hmm. And not a lot of people know, I did know it, but I find it quite moving. Your son, Cahill, mm. he's deaf, yeah. isn't he? Yeah. Tell me about that and how you knew, found that out for the first time. Well, we have two kids, Cahill, who's 11 on Thursday, and um, May. Happy birthday, Cahill. Yeah. We sneak in both yes to Lisbon the same yes. day. <laughs> no, she said, can she sneak in both yes to Lisbon? No! I'm joking. Well, I'm not joking. <laughs> well, Cal was, when Cal was born, Cal was born the day after the general election. And um, I, he was actually three years of age before we actually knew that he was deaf. Um, you know, he, he was very cute, very bright. Uh, had a lot of frustration. I actually thought there was something else wrong with him. It is only when we went through the process and had further tests that we discovered he was deaf. Um, when he was born, he, was, uh, he wasn't totally deaf, but um, it deteriorated over the last number of years. Uh, and then he became almost totally deaf two years ago. Um, and we had a great team looking after us in Beaumont. Uh, Dr. Laura Viani, I think there was a TV mm. program about her during the week. We went and, and we saw her as part of the team and we were very, very lucky to get on the cochlear implant program and he got a cochlear implant uh, almost two years ago and now he's really, really doing very well. It's wow. fabulous. And can he actually hear? He can, he can hear now, which is just, you know, we talk about technology, if anything was to change anybody's life, it was the fact that he can hear because of a cochlear implant. Uh, and it's great that it can be done here, it can be done in Bowman Hospital. And that's a happy ending, but like, can you remember where you were and how you and Dave first dealt with when you discovered your mm. son was deaf? Because that is, by any standards, yeah, it's a tough. big crisis. It in, is. Yeah. We, we went to Letterkenny to, to have a test done and before we even had it done, the lady that was there, who still looks after Cahill, said, I'm sorry, he's deaf. She didn't even have to notice. She knew she was a professional. We didn't see it. And like were it's, you shocked? It's, we were a little. But and in the other way, we were delighted to know what was wrong. And then you move on. And that's, that's all you can do. You move on with whatever, whatever's been given to you. And there are people worse off in life than you are. Mm. And um, we got a lot of support. It was huge. It really worked out. And when you travel all the way down from Inver, mm. is that difficult? I don't mean is it difficult being a working mother with kids. No. That is such a boring question. But you know, you actually <laughs> physically live in Inver. Yeah. And yet yeah. you work in Dublin. Yeah. The only thing that I hate and despise about moving is packing. After that, I can manage anything. <laughs> but it can be tough. But I remember my mother saying to me, look at Mary, you have to let go. There's nothing you can do if you're in Dublin. So you have to trust the people that you've left behind. So I have David's a re role reversal in our house. David's at home. We have great support uh, in, in staff. And I have a nanny who looks after the kids, and she looks after them so well. And I have my mother. So, you know, unlike perhaps Dublin, where um, people don't know each other, in the country it's much, much easier, and you have a lot more support. So you just, I just had to let go. And then, but not to talk about tragedy too much, but mm. then your husband, mm. he had a really bad accident. Ten years ago, yeah, leg. he lost yeah. his leg in an accident. That was very, very traumatic for, for him, of course, naturally. And uh, Cahill was very small at the time. How, what happened? Is he it... was uh, coming home, he was working, and uh, after leaving someone off, he was going back to the station and he hit black ice, rolled over, and um, whatever way the leg hit off the uh, steering wheel, um, unfortunately, he had to lose the leg. But it was a very traumatic time for him and for everyone, but it's like everything else, you just have to move on. Do you think experiences like that changed you as a person? Mm. You know, sometimes adversity mm. can make people stronger. Did it change it you? It did. Because of the fact that you had to get on with it. Mm. And you had to, you know, you had to face the realities. And though it's very difficult at the end of the day, you have to appreciate the fact that if you don't move on, something will eat up into you and that's going to do you no good. And I had two kids to look after. And, um, you know, it, it, it appreciate, you appreciate life much more. I think that's mm. really, at the end of the day, what happens. Because you're always very good, Jane Wood. Even in the doll, you make me laugh, because you're always <laughs> smiling. A lot of people are very dour. Yeah. But you manage to smile a lot. Yeah, you don't live with me, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they say, do you want to know me? Come and live with me. Exactly. Yeah, but like, I... Why I, are you grumpy at home? Oh, don't talk. <laughs> I have a temper, but anyway, <laughs> but that's, that's just frustration. You know yourself. The one thing is when you come home on a high or a low, whatever, you really shouldn't take it home with you, but it's very difficult not to because home's the only safe place you can really say what you have to say. Do you prefer Brian to Bertie? That's not a fair question. I know. <laughs>
<laughs> well, um, Bertie was the first man that appointed me as a Minister for State and uh, he gave me my first chance and I've always worked very, very well with Bertie and always uh, enjoyed working for him and with him and, and you know, really, it's, uh, as I said... I, but I who do you prefer? I'm not going to say that, <laughs> my goodness, I'm a politician. <laughs> But I'm delighted with Brian. He's young. I've known Brian since I first went into, into the doll. Um, we were backbenchers together. He moved on perhaps much more quickly than I did. I admire him. I think he's a great guy. Um, I suppose sometimes often not portrayed, in, in my view, the, the man that we actually know. Uh, and I suppose that's always going to be difficult for him. But he's, he's a very, very bright man. And the one thing about him is he has a massive humanity that a lot of people don't understand. And I know it probably was a bit sexist, but do you remember when your first appointment, a lot of people said you were there to soften yeah. his image? Yeah. Is there any truth in that? Uh, we'll, we'll see. I'll ask me, ask me in four years' time. <laughs> <laughs> did there you know soft women in Fianna Fáil. Did you not know that? No. <laughs> but did you mind people saying that? Do you notion that he needed, I suppose, a softer camouflage for himself? No, he needed a good, hard-working woman, and that's what he got. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you very much for Pleasure. being my first guest tonight. Pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, Mary Cotton. Thank you. Thank you.